we're going to continue our series on how to utilize the RhinoMock isolation framework. In this episode, we're going to pick off where we left off last time, but this time we're going to actually take a look at the various ways that you can verify your expectations on an isolated object. So if we bounce to the code that we had last time, this is the, the test that we carried last time, and just as a quick explanation, we generate a few stubs using the generate stub mechanism. We set a few expectations by using the stub uh, extension methods, and then we called into it. But we did not validate that anything was going to, you know, anything was called or anything that took place. So, but we want to do that today. And within the RhinoMox framework, there's actually two different ways to validate that your expectation was met and called. And we'll take a look at both of those today. So let's go ahead and get started and let's dive into some code. Now the first thing we want to do is I want to change this generate stub to be a generate mock. And the reason is, as we talked last time, the difference between a mock and a stub in Rhino mock terms is a stub is something where you don't expect to validate an expectation, whereas a mock is something where you're going to set expectations and validate them. So once we've changed that to generate, the next thing we want to do is actually take a look at one of the two possible ways to uh, assert that something was called. And the first thing we're going to do is utilize the expect uh, syntax. The expect syntax will basically set up an expectation, and then you'll have to assert it later that it was actually called. So we're going to do expect, and what we're going to do here is you know, set up an expectation that if everything passes correctly, our send email method will be called. And that's all we have to do right there. Now, by default, it will expect it to be set up once. If you'd like to set it up to to you know be called multiple times, you could use the repeat syntax. And repeat has any at least once times, and you can give it a, va a variable twice. We're not going to do that for here. We're just going to expect it to be called once. Now that we've set up our expectation, we need to actually assert that it was actually called. Now, using the expect keyword, you would then just go down and say email .verify all expectations. And if the send email method was not called, this would actually fail a unit test. So let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. And I'm going to put a breakpoint right here in send email because what I want to show is that when I do run this and I do skip over the send email and verify it, it will actually fail my test. So let's go ahead and hit F5 so we can get to our send email. I'm going to skip over this right now. And I'm going to hit F11 and come back. And here I'm going to verify that my expectation was met that I find up here. But if I look at my unit test, you'll see that it actually failed. And the reason it failed is that I had expect expectation violation exception. G email gateway Send, that, send email was expected to be called once, but in actuality it was called zero times. Now if I run this again and actually leave the code in place to actually call the send email, my test will pass. And if I look at my unit test, it says when all information is valid, any email sent, it did succeed. So what we just demonstrated right there is how you can set up an expectation and verify that it was called. Now that is one of the two possible ways that you can do that within the Rhino Mox mocking framework. Um, the other way we'll show you right now. Let's go ahead and delete that. And instead of saying email gateway that verify all exceptions, what you expectations, what you can do is say assert was called. And there you see there's the, the second method, assert was not called. We'll take a look at the assert was called right now. And I can use the Lambda syntax, send email. And this will have the same effect as the other one, the other mechanism. Let's run this right now. And I will skip over this call again just to prove that if it doesn't get called, it will actually blow, my, blow up on my assertion. 
And you'll see, again, I get the inspection violation exception. Now, if I run this again and let it actually hit everything, it should pass again. And sure enough, it did. So you can see that there are two different ways to perform your assertions. Now, the question you were probably asking is, why would I want to assert something that's called? Well, in our scenario here, the unit test is designed so that if all things go well up here, that the action of send email is called. Now, send email does not return us a value, so I can't assert that the value it returned is valid. So the only thing I can do is say that if everything goes well, this method should be called. Now, I don't really care what the method does because that's not my responsibility or my concern. So by setting up these expectations and asserting that they were called, I'm assured that if everything goes well, my code works as expected. Now, why is there the two different mechanisms to do the assertion? Mostly it's just based on preference. I choose, I tend to choose the assert was called syntax. I think it's a little cleaner, a little bit easier to maintain. Um, I think it read a little bit more as well. Now, what if you did not, you wanted to assert that it was not called? Well, we showed that there was the, there was the assert was not called mechanism. And basically what this will do is it will say, hey, if you are called, you failed. If you did not, were not called, then everything went well. Maybe in this scenario, if I was testing that if, you know, uh, my validator failed, that not only did it throw an exception, but it also did not send an email. You know, that way I can test my edge conditions to ensure that if something fails, that the happy paths don't, don't uh, get completed at all. So there you go. In a matter of a few minutes, we're taking a look at how you can set up an expectation, how you can assert that that expectation was either called or not called. We're taking a look at what happens if, you know, in the edge there's failure scenarios where if you're saying it should be called and it wasn't, how it'll actually fail your unit test. So I hope you learned something, and until next time.